All right, so I'm just in between a couple projects in the shop. I'm in the midst of finishing up the bookcases, if you can see over there, and I've had an issue. So I have a coat rack in my house that has broken four times in the last two weeks, and I basically just called it quits. I chopped it up and threw it in the wood stove. So now I'm going to be making my own style of a coat rack. It's going to be... I've heard a couple different names for it. Um, I don't know the exact name. I think it's called either a china wall or a piano wall. But it's going to be a bunch of 8 foot 1x1 one one sticks of lumber with some tines that kind of fold out as you need them and your coat rack can actually hang on them or your coat can hang on them as your rack. But also works as putting like purses and hats and gloves, even your shoes and whatnot. I if I work out the computer thing, I have a couple pictures I'll post after this to give you a little bit of an idea. It's not my own idea, it's something I found and a couple years ago I'm like, I want to build that sometime. Well, now I have the time to actually build it and the need to build it. So I'm planning on making one that's 36 inches wide by about 8 foot tall. That way I can go basically floor to ceiling or at least the high of the height of what I can reach so I can put uh, coats on top and then on bottom maybe bottom two courses can be shoes or boots or whatever um, but yeah I don't have any drawings for I'm just kind of gonna be winging it so we'll see how this goes but uh I have some organizing to do if you look at the lumber rack it is quite messy right now I have small little cut up pieces sticks of stuff here. I need to organize this a little. I need to find out what lumber I'm getting. I don't plan on buying any lumber, so that's another thing. I want to configure this so I can use scrap lumber. Like, if I'm going to use these small cutoffs for the tines that fold out, that'd be perfect. Um, if I have some eight foot boards, looks like right here, I'll use those. Um, basically, it's going to add to the character. If it's a bunch of different species, in my mind, it'll look cool. I mean, these are some of my cutting boards. And if you look at that, that's a bunch of different species. And I think it looks cool. So if this ends up coming out like that with a bunch of different species, hopefully not uniform, kind of random, I like it. All right, so I'm gonna go through, try and organize this some, figure out what I have, what I'm gonna use, and I'll go from there. Well, I think I did a moderately decent attempt at trying to organize the lumber rack. I have all my hard maple and my working beams on this rack. I have all my soft maple um, on this rack. I have my future mantle that eventually will get done whenever I finally get to it. And then one random piece of red birch on this one. This is kind of my go-to rack, my work area where I store my slip my uh, straight line sled. This is a jig for a stand that I have. Um, this is just a catch tray with my drilling jigs and another straight line sled. So yeah, this is kind of just the catch because it's right at shoulder height and comfortable and easy. My next one down is my heavy duty uh, straight edge. 
Then I have all my ePay. One below that is my eight quarter cherry, which I'm getting low on, but I don't have any jobs coming up with it, so I'm not gonna be ordering any soon. And then the last is the red birch. So I kind of have it all organized on species, not by size, but by species. So I was doing some quick measurements. I think I might do, so yeah. The, the piano wall, it has to have a eight foot stick, then it has the tines that fold out, and then another eight foot stick, then the tines that fold out. So every other stick is eight foot. So I think I have enough of the red birch and this thick board and this thick board down here to uh, make the eight footers. This, this one's like 90, 99 inches, 98 inches. So it's just over eight foot. This one down here is 16 foot, four inches. So that's enough to get two sections of eight foot. They're both roughly 11 inches wide. I don't, I haven't done any math yet as to how many sticks I need, but at least it'll give me a good majority. And then I'll have to uh, decide whether I'm not, I'm going to use cherry or maple. I'm not going to use the ePay. I don't think the ePay would match in. That's an exterior type of wood, not an interior. But yeah, so I'll have to ch decide if I'm going to use maple or cherry. Um, that's all I have for eight foot stuff is maple, hard maple, soft maple, cherry, and red birch. I have all this over here that I pulled out. All this random stuff, it's just all random widths and thicknesses and lengths and everything. Um, I have a significant portion of red birch and a significant portion of maple. Um, and then all this is just random, all different species of different sizes. I'm going to cut these up for tines. I don't know what size. I'm going to try and find out my most universal size to get the best amount of yield with everything here. And uh, I'll just make them all that. It looks like I might end up having to go like uh, three quarters of an inch by one and a quarter inches instead of one by one. Just because most of my boards, like this right here, is only 15 sixteenths. So it's already less than one inch. And then a lot of these down here, of course I grab one that's 15 sixteenths, but a lot of these down here are already just at 13 sixteenths, but I can see this one's under 13. This looks like it's probably a heavy five eighths, maybe 11 sixteenths at most. So yeah, I'm gonna go through, figure all this out, use those for my tines, then I don't know what you're gonna call these long boards. The full length boards, I guess. I'm going to figure out what those are. I mean, they don't have to be the same width as the uh, as the tines. But it kind of would look a little weird if you have a thin board, a thick board, a thin board, a thick board. But then again, it might also look right. I don't know. I'll see. Oh yeah, I did forget to add. I do have these big chunks of cherry. These two big slabs right there. But this random cut off that was from a table or a countertop I made a while ago. It's always important to keep stuff like this because it always comes in handy. I had like three of those right there and that's the only one left. Another thing I didn't point out is this top shelf is just my miscellaneous trims. Let me see if I can get the camera up there. It's just a bunch of random trims that I have. They're really lightweight so I figured they're best off on top. But yeah, I'm going to go through this pile and see what I can get for yield out of it. All right, so I've gone through the pile and I've separated it a little. So I have a bunch of maple over here, which I can get plenty of um, one quarter, one and one quarter inch wide by three quarter inch thick tines out of. Everything over here, I have random length and width sticks of maple that I can do the same thing. And then I have a couple boards over here. One, two, three, four, five boards over here 
that are red birch that I'll be able to get again three quarter inch thick by one and a quarter inch wide rips out of. These I do have to pay a little attention. They were glued bef glued up before. Like if I can get this to zoom in. There is a tongue and groove glue joint right here. Um, that's just a crack, but there's another tongue and groove glue joint right here. I don't want those in my final use, so I do have to figure out in between all those because there's glue joint there, glue joint there, glue joint there. On this one, you might be able to see it right on the face. Yeah, glue joint right there. But yeah, so I'm leaning towards just going with maple and red birch. I don't have, well, I didn't even go through all that cherry right there. I have plenty of it. It's plenty thick enough, but I don't think I want to break those down for this. I'd rather use smaller chunks. And then all this stuff right here, it's very small. Like this one is three quarters by seven sixteenths. Um, this one is seven sixteenths by one inch. So it's just like all random stuff. I'm just going to cut it up for kindling for the fire. I don't think I should save it anymore. I can't think of anything. I mean, even for cutting boards, it's really small. So, yeah, I'm just going to cut that up for kindling. But, yep, yeah, I am going to uh, go through. I think I'm going to plane all of these down to a consistent three quarters of an inch first. And then I'm going to rip them to like one and five sixteenths. And then I'll go through the planer and plane them to an exact one and a quarter inch. That way they're all consistent. I might actually go one and three eighths and then plane them to one five sixteenths. And then go to the drum sander rather than trying to orbital sand everything. I'll get the drum sander to do a lot of it. But yeah, alrighty.
Well, this kind of sucks. As I was ripping down all the boards that were on the table saw, I turned around and realized that I missed all of these boards when I was planing. Well, the reason why this sucks is, yeah, it seems like it's simple, easy, I can just go plane these down, and I'm going to, but I have to get these to the exact same thickness as all of these. But I'm gonna be changing the planer thickness to plane these down. So I have to be very accurate when I get close to the measurement, hold these flush on the cast iron, the new boards hold flush on the cast iron and make sure it's perfectly flush. The reason I have to have it exact is when these are actually in the unit, if I have this one exactly three quarters of an inch, but I have those mixed in and they happen to be a 30 second over or 30 second under, it won't pinch them and sandwich them correctly. So there'll be some that won't hold up on their own or some that'll just fall down on their own. But yeah, I'm gonna go back and plane all those down and uh, see what I can get. All right, so I got all of these ripped down to one and three eighths of an inch. I'm going to plane them down on the width this way and this way to just a shy one and five sixteenths. So I'm going to take a little more than a 30 second off of both sides. That way I'm not dealing with, uh, of course, I grab one that's already planed on one side. Here, over here. I know I cut these. That way I'm not dealing with saw kerf and saw cuts on here and whatnot. And again, you can't... Oh, there you go. I don't know if the camera's going to show it. But yeah, it just planes this off, gives it a nice smoother edge. So it looks closer to this one, so it's easier for sanding. And the reason I'm going to 1 and 5 sixteenths is because I'm going to send it through the drum sander to get them all exactly the same at 1 and, three, uh, one and a quarter inches. So, yeah, I'm going to go through that. The piles look fairly uneven, but I'm kind of thinking that I'm probably gonna get about the same amount of tines out of both because like these, I can get probably two out of a lot of them. I can get multiple, maybe three or four out of this length. But in here, there's a big stack of it where I only can get one out of them. So I'm thinking it'll probably about be about even. So if it is even, I might end up actually making some type of pattern across the, the uh, piano wall or whatever this thing's called, the coat rack. But uh, yeah. Who knows? We'll see when it comes down to it. Oh, actually, this does give me the chance of kind of putting this out on display if the picture didn't show it. But either way, this, yeah, how did I put this up? So, these are going to be two long lengths. Imagine them being eight foot long because that's what I plan on making it. And I cut this little sample piece there's going to be a hole drilled in here and a threaded rod that'll go through the whole thing and the threaded rod and bushing will go in here and this will sink in there except this is just a sample so it's small it'll be like that and it'll have a little bit of a space in between for the teflon washers that's why it needs to be the exact same uh, dimensions everything has to be the same thickness for the tines this is kind of hard to do without having the rod in there. But yeah, it'll, it'll be like that. And then you'll pull it and it'll rotate on that threaded rod and come out like that. So you can hook your coat, coat on there or your purse on there. If you fold out like four of them or something, you can stick your shoes in there. Do I have any shoes? No, but I have gloves right here. So if you have them, if you fold out a couple of them, you can put your gloves 
a bunch of stacked up gloves and whatnot in there. So I think it's a good idea. Like I said, it's not my idea. It's something I stole off the internet and I wanted to build it. So here I am. I'm building it. All right, so now I'm starting to cut the, what I'm calling tines. There's that board. It's gonna get some drilling to it and everything. But I have about a billion more to do. All I have is a simple, I mean, again, this is my sample. Just a little simple stop block. I'm cutting a 45 to start and then flip the board over, bump it to the stop and then cut it to length. Afterwards, I'll go over to that saw, the table saw, I mean, I could do it on here also. It's just, I feel like it'll be quicker on the table saw, but I'm going to square off this corner, make it like a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch flat on it. So when people's fingers are grabbing it, they're not grabbing, oh, if I have a camera pointed at it, they're not grabbing a sharp point right here. If I square it off, they're grabbing, it's square, but it kind of gives it like a rounded feeling to it. So I'm going to do that. Got to cut, like I said. A whole bunch more so that'll just be time-lapse maybe speed it up even from that so it's not taking forever alrighty see ya All right, so it's actually a couple days later because I had to wait for some stuff to come in. But I decided I was going to make some of these tines the full length. And then I'm going to add in some of the ones. Um, these are shorter length ones. Because where I'm putting it, it's right next to a stairwell. So I figure with this tine at the stairwell sticking out. I don't remember the measurement right now. I think it's 13 or 14 inches. It sticks out from the wall once the whole thing's built. If I put this in, it's about half that. It's about eight or nine inches that it will stick out. So it's less obtrusive or obstructive. But the reason I had to wait is I had a bunch of stuff coming in. Ordering online just because it was convenient, easy, and I had too much other stuff going on. But yeah, I have nylon bushings. Then I have nylon washers that I'm trying to locate right there. What these are going to do is, you know, i got to put the camera down to actually do this. I'm going to drill a hole in, well this is a scrap piece, but I'm going to drill a hole in this, somewhere in this location, and press this nylon bushing in there. And then when it goes all together, there'll be a nylon washer. Come on, right there. On each side of the threaded rod. 
and I'm using the threaded rod to go through all of the tines. So it'll be a bunch of boards. Now, granted, these are all the tines because I didn't mill the regular boards, but it'll look like a bunch of boards just like this. Except a little more consistent because it'll actually be bolted in there. But it'll look like that. And then it'll have the bushing inside the wood that you won't see and, and the washer in between that'll actually make the spacing. So let's see. That's going to be the spacing in between. So I think it'll be pretty cool. Now I have to figure out where I have to drill these holes. Put in the wrong stuff back. Put that there. Put that there. I have to figure out where I have to drill the hole here to create the pivot. So I'm going to try and work on that. I'll set up the drill press with all that and uh, I'll get to drilling all these. I have a lot of holes to drill and I have to drill a counterpart hole in um, the tall eight foot legs or whatever you want to call them whenever I decide to mill those up. I just want to get all these tines done first. Alrighty. Okay, I think I finally figured it out. I have to center the hole and the width, but on this angle, I have to come in line with this and then come down a quarter inch. So where that meets, yeah, let me kind of draw that. So I have this line that is the center of the width of the board. <coughs> And then this one indicates in line with, oh, I guess I can't do it with that one. And maybe I can on this side. Will the thing be in the way? No, it's not. That indicates in line with the tip of the miter. And then I want to come down from that one quarter of an inch. Right there is where I want the center of my half inch hole that this nylon bushing goes in. That allows it to pivot and still be in line with everything. Now on the back side, when I assemble the whole thing, I have to put some cleats because I don't want it pushing against the drywall, but this is gonna be a cleat and the cleat is gonna start probably right around where this is so it doesn't interfere with the action of it moving because if you look at it that little nub does actually come out just a little so but we still want the cleat there to stop it all right so now that i have this set up i'm gonna put a fence and a stop on there and drill a whole bunch of holes Alright, I have all of what I'm calling the tines uh, drilled, 
well cut to size drilled and also have the end cut off of this one or this side of it like i said before to kind of smooth it out when you grab it so you're not grabbing a sharp point and it's uncomfortable but i'm just going to leave these they need a whole bunch of sanding but i'm not going to do that right now i am going to dig out the boards that i'm going to be using for the full length um uprights or legs or i don't know what whatever the heck they're called but yeah i'm going to dig those out and start milling those down i don't think i'm going to actually record any of that because that's just another repetition of what you've already seen so once i get those all done i'll go over when i'm getting ready to drill them all righty all right i have all of my sticks or legs or whatever you want to call them milled up this is most of them and then there's the last one up here i have all of the center ones at one and a half inches no not one and a half sorry one and a quarter inches wide by one inch thick and then i have the two end ones one inch thick by two inches wide and that is to cover the french cleat that is going to get mounted to the back of these that holds it onto the wall this one up here i have penciled out where i want my actual tines to go can you even see that on the camera yeah yeah i have penciled out just stenciled where i want the tines to go and this is going to be my jig piece so i have my fence with my stop block and i'll be able to drill all of these holes and then once i drill all of those holes i'll be able to set it up for the next hole and the next hole and the next hole Alrighty. I'm just going to set a time lapse of a bunch of drilling again. Okay, I got all of these drilled. I have five holes in each one. Let's see. Right there, right there, 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 and there. Those will be the locations for the anchor point or the pivot point for each one of the tines. And then this gives you a little bit, oops, I turned that the wrong way. Gives you a little bit of a better idea of what I'm talking about. So this, all of these will be spaced out like that. And then these tines will be in between where the bolt that goes through, or a threaded rod actually, and those um, nylon washers and bushings that anchor that through those two holes. And then that will pivot like this. But I still have more stuff to do. I have to make brackets on the back or uh, cleats, I don't know what you would want to call them, blocking, that this joint has to actually push against. The miter right here has to push against it when it pivots. 
so I have to make those and also it's going to hang off of two French cleats on the wall so I can level out the cleats and then just pick this up and place it onto it. So, going to work on those next. Oh yeah, and these two end boards. I don't want the threaded rod sticking out of the end, so I'm going to countersink. I don't know where my washers are right now, but I'm going to countersink a hole big enough to recess the washer and the nut in, so it's probably going to be about three-eighths of an inch deep so the nut and the threaded rod are recessed into the wood but again that'll just be done on the drill press afterwards yeah I had to move some stuff out of the way so I could get the boards to pass through over here and over here yep on to the next thing Okay, so I had most of the parts already done. I still don't have the blocking for the back and stuff, but I just had it sitting here. I'm like, I gotta assemble it, I gotta assemble it. So I did a couple. Now, it's laying sideways, so this is what I'm talking about. These are the full length boards right here, and then these tines will pull out like that. So if you look at it from the side, it folds in and pulls out. And then here is another. And then the blocking on back is for this. So let me just, here, I'll do one where you can see a different color. It has to have something right here to stop it from continuing to pivot. Otherwise, it'll just dent the drywall. Well, actually, because this is going to be held away. So, I mean, it will just continue to go. But, yeah, I'm going to be putting blocking across here that stops it, acts as a stopper board yeah this is gonna be awesome right now I have it going every other so I have um, maple red birch maple red birch and then alternating red birch maple red birch maple so I'm gonna do that all the way across and see what it comes out to perfect maybe I should start getting onto this blocking though all right, so it's been about seven eternities later of sanding and then sending these to the finisher, and now I got them back. They did their job in less than a week. Me, it took me probably about four, five weeks to sand everything because it's just a lot of small parts. But yeah, now I am going to unwrap everything and start setting up to assemble this. Can't wait to see what it looks like. All right, so now it's time to start assembling. What I have, I don't know if I explained it before or not, but I am again. I have some threaded rod right here that I am going to be putting washer and a nut on both ends. One end is going to be done later after it's assembled, but this end will be done now because it's going to slide through the horizontal piece or not the, sorry, not the horizontal, the vertical piece, this one right here, that holds it all together. And this is the one, let's try and get that around. This is the piece that has the uh, recessed holes in it. So these will get fed through. Let me see if I can do this one-handed. Like this. That's how that's going to be. So I'll feed all those through. I'll flip this over. I'm going to clamp it to my bench so it's not moving around and also so it holds these in place. All right, let me do that.
All right, I got those all in. A little bit of pain in the butt. Some of them were a little stiff. Some of them just kind of didn't want to go. This one right here is overhanging the table, so I'm going to clamp a board on right here just to stop the rod from falling out and sliding down as I'm trying to assemble it. But other than that, I'm ready to start uh, start sliding everything on. Alrighty.
All right, you got a glimpse of what it's going to look like. I assembled everything. So now I'm going through and these are the bolts for the threaded rod that hold it all together. I'm going to go through and tighten those down so I can cut the boards that I'm using for the stops that stop these from swinging too far. I'm also going to be cutting the boards that are for the French cleats to hang it onto the wall. Um, but I can't do those. I can't cut that to size until I screw all these down, tighten them up, because when I tighten it, it'll actually bring this board in this way and this board in this way and sandwich everything. So right now it's not an accurate measurement. So yeah, I'm going to go through, tighten that, then I'm going to cut all these boards to size. After I cut them to size, I'm going to have a lot of drilling because these boards are going to get screwed into every one of these full length pieces to add strength to it so it doesn't bend as much and also it will stop these from kicking the board out and lifting so if it's not screwed in here and this this tine right here is folded down it can cause it to lift a little right there or flex so better safe than sorry just screw, put one screw in every single board alrighty so I'm gonna go through and do that All right, I got to do that six more times. What I did is I, I placed this in, found out where I wanted it to go, then I marked the center of each of the vertical, or the, yeah, the full upright vertical pieces, and then I came down, I just squared a line across, and I found center. That's where I'm going to drill the holes through, and then I'm going to screw this in. Perfect. Like I said, got to do it six more times, then a whole lot of drilling. So I drilled out all of these cleat boards, I guess you could call them. The French cleat, the cleat boards. Drilled all those out. Now I am getting ready to put them on. But I just checked the entire, call it frame, and it is slightly out of square. Which is kind of expected. Right now it's just held together by a threaded rod that can easily move. So I checked it by measuring diagonals. So from this corner to the opposing corner over there 
is 100, 100 inches and 1 eighth of an inch. From this corner to that corner is 100 inches and 7 eighths of an inch. So 107 eighths. So it's roughly 3 quarters of an inch out of square. So I have a nice long bar clamp, that or pipe clamp I mean, that I'm just going to uh, suck it back to square and go from there. Um, I happen to have a 10 foot pipe clamp. You don't have to use a 10 footer for something long like this. You could always put two together and just have them overlap in the center. But yeah, I happen to have a 10 footer. Can't remember why I wanted it for something. Probably something like this, just easier or convenient. Alrighty, I'm gonna go back to time lapse as I square this up and start drilling everything in. Oh, before I go to time lapse, I countersunk all these holes so the heads of the screws sink in. Then I'm going to take a smaller bit right here and then pilot drill or pre-drill into every one of these so I don't split them. And then I'll sink the screw in. But again, I'm not gonna do that until I have it squared because hopefully these boards will help hold it square a little better. So, perfect. Alrighty, back to time lapse. So on one of them, I did not account for where this board mounts. The top of the board is supposed to mount, come on, pull out, even with the points of right here. That point is two and a quarter inches up from right here. These are three and a half inch boards. It sticks out. So very simple. I'm just going to rip it down on the table saw and then uh, I'll rip both edges. So the screws are still in the center and then I'll just run it flush on bottom. But that means I gotta pick this up, move it again, put it back down. It's getting heavy with all this stuff. All right, so I quickly changed my mind. I decided not to rip this so it was perfectly centered because then I would lose the finished edge that's on here. And this is the bottom of it, so that's most likely where shoes and stuff are gonna go. So I want it finished because I don't want moisture possibly getting in there and whatnot. But this is finished, upside down, but finished. You're not gonna see right side up yet until I actually mount it on the wall. But all I have to do now is um, cut the little nubs of the thread, threaded rod sticking out. And then, uh, yeah, hang it on the wall. I got the French cleats that'll slide into this one right here. French cleat that'll slide it into right here. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna go record hanging it up.
Okay, so I need to mount this with French cleats. So I'm measuring from here, the bottom, to inside of here. That's the first French cleat. And I need 16 inches from the bottom to the bottom of the French cleat. So from on here, I'm not measuring from the floor because I actually, this would be obstructing it. So I need to measure from here, minimum 16 inches up to the bottom of the French cleat that will actually go on the wall like that. So that's what's gonna happen there. And then from that one, I'll get the measurement for the next French cleat that's up there. Alrighty. That's my level line. This is going to get mounted on the bot or on top of that level line, but I have to find where my studs are. And thankfully, this is a semi older house. I can kind of see where they are. This is tapered, that doesn't matter, but it has a countersink tip on it, so I can sink the screw heads in right there. And these I am going to do two screws into each stud. is I'll set one screw so it's snug against the wall and then I'll put the level directly on the floor just in case my level line is slightly off. screws in. <laughs> Key thing about a French cleat is don't accidentally put it on backwards. You can always change it, but sometimes it catches you. It's meant to grab, the, the board on the rack is meant to grab like this, so it won't pull out. So you can accidentally put those on upside down sometimes if you're not paying attention. But over here, so now, the next French cleat is up there. And the measurement between them, I'm just going to put the sharp edge on there, 
I measured down to the sharp edge on here, and it is 56 inches. So that is the spacing that I need to make on the wall. Now it doesn't matter which edge I choose, because I made my French pleats uniform. I'm just going to go off the bottom again because it's easier. So I measure up 56 inches. This side, measure of 56. Put my level on there, make sure they're level. Yep. Now, the only difference with this one is. I need to match the offset off of the wall. I might have to trim that. But I kind of figured that I was going to have to do that. So, I'm going to cheat a little. I'm going to use this for my screw locations. Because the studs should be running wrong. to the wall. Three and fifteen sixteenths to the wall. Now I did cut these three quarters of an inch short of the inside, so a little variance is okay. Kind of why I cut them short. That didn't hit a stud. Well, it'll at least hold it in place while I set them on there. Let's see if that hits a stud. is nothing over here. And according to down below, the studs over here. Looks like someone messed up framing. But if it is, this is just a French cleat, so it doesn't really matter that we put extra holes in. to do is mark these with my drill. There. And there. That's why you always want to hit a stud. I did not unscrew that out. I just pulled it off the wall. it off the corner properly and later I can take it out. That's a stud. Actually levels right here. Put the level on. And now I can take this one out.
And that's the tough part. Lifting this up alone because two people can't do it. I don't know if I'm going to get to that yet. I'm going to check something first. Ooh, we might be close. It's going to be really close. I don't think we're going to have to move the handle. It's not going anywhere. <sighs> Imagine lifting that yourself. <laughs> I'm curious how much you weigh. Not really. I don't want to know. Power practice there. I shouldn't be lifting it. There it is. Oh, jeez. Camera. I don't know. The window messed up all the light. I gotta keep it like right here. That's it. And then these all pull out. This is cool. That is cool. I'm already liking it. It's beautiful. And the color mismatch because they're both light woods. It's maple and red birch. I think they go really well together. It's not too contrasting where it's in your face, but it's really subtle. This would be a lot quicker if I use both hands. There's a lot of them. <laughs> I can't get up there with these open though. The really high rack is really just meant for ah, seasonal stuff that gets used seldom. I <laughs> can't even get one. <laughs> I should have been up here first. There's that with them all open. Now granted, it's probably never gonna have all of them open, but it'll have quite a few. And the side view, coming up the stairs, it doesn't take up any more space than the uh, coat rack that used to be there. And yeah, she has a stool for the top ones because we could have reached them if we didn't open all these. 
but they are up there. It's eight foot tall, so yeah. I like it. So the plan is take your shoes off and you can take your shoes and just throw them like that. Or I mean, if you don't have all of them open, say just one individual, if they're really wet shoes, you can hang them like that. That's a good idea. Have them hang down and we'll just put like a pan or something or whatever underneath. Yeah. Can you grab a coat? And then for coats, I mean this can be shoes and purses right here. Coats could start right here. Right there. Or I mean you could put a coat up there. That's probably a little more convenient. It's not overhanging the shoes. And again, you're not going to have all of them open all the time. So I have one right there. And then say we had another coat, we could put it there. Or a couple purses or whatever. And these narrow ones, they still work for coats also. The long ones are actually overkill. I, I made them long because I wanted to be able to possibly put shoes like that. And I'm sure shoes still will go on it like that, but I wanted them long like that because shoes don't go on like that that well. They did fall off. Yes, you can still hang them like that, but the short ones are probably more standard. But, alright, that's it for now. Hope you guys like it.